Thank you very much, and, and welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, officially now. Um, we'll try and keep this brief and, and get right to the demo. Over the last nine months, uh, we at Tigera here have been working with uh, the AWS uh, teams and early EKS adopters to bring our, our industry-leading network security platform to EKS, and that's Project Calico, Tigera's Calico, and that allows you to apply network policy to protect your workloads in EKS natively. Um, what I'm also here, to, and that's going well, we've got people using it. What I'm also here to talk to you about today, though, is some other work we've been doing at the same time. So this is a really exciting day for us here at Tigera, in that we have been working for, again, over that last period, to bring a new set of features to users and Kubernetes on Amazon that allow you to work with Amazon services and capabilities as well as Kubernetes and bring those together. And we've, when we, people have been, we've been talking to customers about their journey to Kubernetes on AWS, we've discovered that there are a couple of key features that people need in order to make this successful. One is the ability to integrate security policies between EKS and um, between EKS and or uh, Kubernetes on, on Amazon, as well as security groups. We'll talk about that in a second. They need their solutions to be built, and they need this to be built on Kubernetes and on AWS. So what we're talking about today is fully integrated into Amazon Stack. You'll be able to buy it through Marketplace. So. They need to be able to secure and protect their workloads. They need to be able to have their EC2 protected instances. They already have EC2 instances in their Amazon cluster. AD, RDS instances, EC2 instances, already protected by security groups. What you discover is those security groups can't be tied to Kubernetes pods. So how do I make Kubernetes pods interact with my EC2 protections for my uh, existing AWS infrastructure. We can solve that problem for you. Two, you need much better visibility and traceability of your infrastructure. This is to gain compliance requirements. This is to be able to troubleshoot and diagnose, get alerting when things happen. We need to make the visibility and tracing through things like CloudWatch, Kubernetes aware and reliable within a Kubernetes environment. And we do need this continuous compliance. People are saying that they're being blocked from deployment because they can't meet the compliance requirements, the ability to say that they're compliant to their compliance teams within the organization. So continual compliance, logging, making it easy to produce compliance reports, et cetera. This is some of the things we have delivered. Let's look at the first one. Today, as I said, you might discover that you can't apply an EC2 group to a Kubernetes pod. So if I have in resources in VPC, like RDS, like EC2 uh, instances, those might have a security group. What most people have done is they then apply another security group to all the workers in their Kubernetes cluster. What you can't do is apply that security group to a given pod, because security groups bind to the interface of an EC2 instance. Since you don't know where the Kubernetes pod is going to show up, the only way that you can allow, say, a Kubernetes instance to access your RDS database is to apply a security group to all of your Kubernetes workers and then allow that security group access to your RDS instance. I'm seeing people shaking or nodding their heads. That is probably not a zero trust model because that means every Kubernetes pod, everything on that EC2 instance can now access that database. You probably have not achieved security. We can solve that problem. And let me show you with the first mini demo. So once my screen wakes up, what we have done is we've given you the ability to attach a security policy to a Kubernetes cluster. And I'll show you how we do that. First thing I want to show here is uh, we have a DB instance. I've already stood it up. And I have a security group here. Uh, the only one that's really applicable is this DBSG. And it has a 
inbound rule. If I look at that inbound rule, sorry, if I look at that inbound rule, this is the DBSG inbound rule, it is going to allow traffic inbound from uh, this security policy here, which is uh, DB access. I'll, I can dig that back up, but this is the DB access security policy. Oh, access DB security policy. Make note of that number on this policy. What we can now do in Kubernetes is we can annotate a pod. In this case, I'll go and look, pull up the pod here, pod list in the right namespace. Here's my back end. My back end needs to be able to talk to the database. So what I do is I annotate the pod with a label that says this is a member of a given security group. When you do this, we go tell AWS VPCs that the IP address of this pod and this pod only is a member of that security group. If you'll notice on that RDS, there was no ACLs that allowed traffic in other than that security group. If I go over here now, I'm logged into that pod. Please trust me, I've only got a couple of minutes. Now, let's go and try and telnet to that, uh, let's go try and telnet to that database on the SQL, um, PGSQL port. You always get ah. cut and paste always gets you in a demo. And you'll notice I am now connected to that database. That security policy allowed me in. To avoid the smoke and mirrors, though, let's just prove to you that that was the security group and not something else. So I'm going to go in and edit this pod. Spinning wheel of death. OK. Um, I've got a latency problem here somewhere. There we go. Now I'm just going to remove that annotation. Save it. Update the pod. You'll now notice that the annotation is gone. If I go back here and try the telnet again, no joy, can't get in. I've now linked security groups into pods. I can do the reverse. I can now refer, also I'm not going to show you now, I can use security groups as labels in Kubernetes network policy so that Kubernetes network policy can refer to things tagged by, spe by specific security groups. Now that I've done all that, the next thing I need to know is logging. Logging is great. Flow logs in CloudWatch aren't really incredibly useful in Kubernetes for two main reasons. One, Kubernetes network policy can block flows. When you block flows, CloudWatch flow logs do not show up. So all the things I might really be interested in as a signal to show I'm under attack or there's been a misconfiguration why some application isn't working will no longer be logged because CloudWatch only picks up allowed traffic, not denied traffic. So we need to capture denied logs as well as allowed logs. Two, in a Kubernetes environment, IP addresses on workloads change really, really frequently. So having a log, I've got to, I've got to wrap up, but having a log that shows IP addresses isn't useful. I need to have them mandated with metadata, and I'm just going to show you really quickly the actual flow logs that we have here, and then I'll get off the stage. Here is our flow logs, and you can see, for example, come on. I know, I know, I know, I'm, I'm coming off. Um, I'm going to go here. I'm going to see flow logs. And these flow logs are annotated with the namespace, the names of the pods, the labels associated with the pods. If it's allowed or denied. And if you look in here, you will see the denied packets that we denied when I removed the security group. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Christopher, come join yep. us. Too many cables. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that, awesome. was, that was dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a question. Sure. Uh, as, you know, one of the best parts about using containers is that you can spin them up and bring them down, mm -hmm. in, you know, extremely quickly, do lots of experimentation, et cetera. How quickly do these security policies get applied to you know, these external resources, these security groups, and how, how quickly do those updates go out? Really, really quickly. So that's one of the things we've spent a lot of time optimizing at, at Tigera. Um, in a classical Kubernetes cluster, updates across a fleet of 1,000 servers, 100,000 containers being changed hundreds of times a minute, 95% of the time, it's under five milliseconds for, wow. for a policy to, to, be, to propagate across the infrastructure. That's so I, it's probably faster than you're going to get your container up. That's huge. That's super important because in the middle of a deploy, you need, you know, the container needs to come up and it needs to go healthy as fast as possible. So if part of its health liveliness is, you know, being able to reach a resource, then uh, that's, a, that's critical. So that's really awesome. With the flow logs, how fast can I see those annotated flow logs? It's pretty much instantaneous. It's, it's again, it's, it's the, a chain through CloudWatch, so there's a little bit of latency, but it, it's mm -hmm. pretty close to real time. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you.